Good evening, Canada, and welcome to this evening's Strategy of the Week titled Option Success, the Markets and the Greeks. My name is Kevin Crow, Manager of Retirement Services, and I'll be your host this evening. Last week, I shared with you as clients a simple, disciplined, and systematic strategy to buy put options in a down market. Options conjure up many things in people's minds, including risk, fear, difficulty, and frustration. Tonight, we'll continue the journey begun last week. We'll look at using put options, using the IG Plungers Canada search, and apply a systematic approach to option selection, trade execution, and money management. The key to correctly implementing this plan will be having a pragmatic understanding of how Delta and Theta can impact an option position and the unique relationship between Delta and Theta on the successful outcome of a trade. So let's take a look at the definitions of each of these. Delta is the amount an option price is expected to move based upon a $1 change in the underlying stock. Theta is the amount the price of calls and puts will decrease, at least in theory, for a one-day change in the time to expiration. To offset this, the option buyer has got to learn how to have an appropriate balance between time, or theta, and delta, price movement. So as an example, if the time to expiration is too short and the underlying is not moving, theta or time decay will absolutely overwhelm option price and movement. When we buy puts or calls, we've got to consider the following. If we're buying calls, we want a delta at least of 0 0.80 or greater. If we're buying puts, a delta of negative 0 0.80 or greater. And to offset the ravages of time decay and allowing our underlying security to move in the desired direction, we want an expiration of 60 days or more. Industry research indicates approximately 40% of the stock movement is due to market direction. Our confirmed market calls will be used as a basis of buying puts. And additionally, that same research also validates, by the way, that industry group direction is also a significant component of price direction. So IG Plunges Canada is a solid choice to embrace the impact of industry on price movement. In a bear market, there are a number of things that we could do. One, we could go to cash, but with the yields being so low, that may not be a viable alternative. We could short stock. However, regulations might prohibit us from getting the stock that we would like to short. Third, we could buy contra ETFs, but today there are so many ETFs that it gets confusing out there for people in choosing the correct one. And finally, our last option, and a very viable one, is to buy puts. Using the IG Plungers Canada strategy, we'll journey into the world of making money using options. And using this strategy, we'll see how we can make money in a down market. So let's look at some of the parameters. First, we're going to look for stocks that are $30 per share or greater. Additionally, we want option volume of 100,000 shares. The industry RT will be lower than it was 10 days ago. Our vector vest recommendation will equal a sell or a hold. And also, we're going to sort by CI ascending, or comfort index ascending. So let's go right to our home page. First thing we're going to do, we'll come up to our Unisearch tab, left click, and we're going to go to our date bar. And we're going to change the date bar from today's date back to April the 2nd, which was the beginning of the current confirmed down. Click on that, click OK, and come over here to our searches. We'll scroll down until we get to strategies short. From here, we'll scroll down until we get to IG plungers. Left click on that, confirm our data for 2 of 2013, and run search. What I want to do next is scroll all the way to the right, come to the CI or comfort index column, left click until I have CI ascending. What this does is it brings the worst performing industry groups to the top. So if we are fishing in a pond that has the worst performing industry groups and are looking for stocks in those industry groups, it's highly likely that in a down market, we're putting all the things in our favor to make some money. Let's scroll back to the left, and I want to find the first stock that's at least $30 per share, and that's Gold Corp. Currently, or on the 2nd of April, you can see it was trading at 32.82. Let's continue to scroll over. It at least meets our hold recommendation. And now let's verify that it has the appropriate volume. Average volume is greater than 2 million shares daily. Our next $30 stock is Suncor Energy, ticker symbol SU. Well, let's verify that it meets all of our parameters. Yes, we have at least a hold recommendation. And we have over 3 million shares traded daily. So these look like two good stocks that we can begin to run some of our testing to see if we can find an appropriate option by which we could make money. Let's come back to Gold Corp. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to Analyze Options. 
I'm going to left click on bearish and I'll left click on long put. Now you notice our trade date is 4 2 of 2013. I'm going to move our current data back to the trade date of 4 2 2013 and note that our option expiration date is the April 32 put. Well our trade date is the second. This expires the third Friday in April. Probably not a good choice in terms of time. I'll scroll over and verify our delta. It's at negative 0.32 not what we're looking for in terms of 0 0.80. So I'll come to our edit button. We have our April expiration. I'm going to move up to the July because I know that will give me enough time for the underlying to move. I'll come over to strike price, click on 38, click OK. Let's check our delta. Well, our delta is a very satisfactory 0.83. So I feel comfortable that using this date and strike price will help us make money if the underlying security moves in the appropriate direction. Now there's a couple ways in which we can look at this. First, if we come to the current data and I move our date to yesterday's close, you can see that if we got into this trade on April the 2nd, 2013, we would have made $3,500 by yesterday's close. However, let's go back to the beginning and see what would happen if we move forward one day at a time. In other words, we're going to use some stop losses both for profit as well as losses and take our trade off the table when the appropriate profit stop or stop losses hit. One day into the trade, April the 3rd, we're up $1,050. If we were going in with a 10% profit, we are now up nearly 20%. Many people would continue the journey for higher profits, but this trader is going to take his trade off the table and go in search of a new candidate to make money on again. Let's look at our trade simulation. And again, you can see if we went back to the April 2nd date and kept moving forward a day, how the profit and loss would have varied. And another recommendation I would have is as you are incurring profits, either adjust your stop losses to take you out of a trade when you've hit an appropriate amount of profit, or at the very least, never lose or give back more than half of any profit that you've gained. So at this point, on April 17th, we'd have been up $4,600. Eight days later, we're down to 2,080. In other words, you would have left more than 50% of your profit on the table. Please don't do that. Have a predetermined plan as where you'll take your money with either a profit or a loss. Let's now move on to Suncor Energy. You're going to right click on Suncor, click on Analyze Options, Bearish, Long Put. Again, we'll notice that our expiration date is the same month as our trade date. Probably too short an expiration period. So let's change that. But first, let's verify delta. Again, you can see it's at 0.42, not a number that we would want to make or put on a trade with. So we'll come to our Edit button. We're going to change our expiration from April to June. And let's change our strike price from 31 to 34. Click OK. And let's take a look at delta. Delta is now at 0.85. That's a number we can work with. Using our one day at a time analysis, we move forward one day, we can see that on a debit of $3,020, if we were in here for a 10% gain, on one day into the trade, we're up over 30%. Again, using our trade simulator to give you an idea that if you kept moving forward with your profits, that you'd want to tighten your stops each day that you gain more money. But also, if we take this near-term high water mark, at $2,160 and come down here to this downturn, we don't ever want to give up more than 50% of our gain. Let's look at this stock one more way. I'm going, to, I'm going to click on the icon below the View tab. I'm going to click on Simulation Report, and again, I'm going to change our date to the 13th. Click on Preview, and this now gives us a tabular format by which to assess or evaluate the trade. You can see our date column. You can see the price of our underlying security, in this case, Suncor Energy. You can see how the option price has changed. Of course, our debit amount would remain the same. And you can see your profit. So again, regardless of which way you choose to evaluate the trade, my advice would be go in with a predetermined profit stop and stop loss. And if you're going to continue to let your profits run, please adjust your trades daily and never give back more than half of your gain. So in summary, always use market timing 
as a key signal to enter trades. Market timing coupled with industry group performance is a great setup for looking at stocks and industry groups that are underperforming key metrics. Secondly, buy puts with a minimum of a negative 0 0.80 delta or better. Go in with predetermined profit and loss values. Have appropriate balance between option price and delta. Learn to use option analyzer to evaluate trades. And if in fact you do not have option analyzer, get a two week free trial of option analyzer and at the end of that trial period, if you wish to purchase it, we'll give you a $100 discount. I hope this presentation was of value to you this evening. Please call if you have any questions. Again, this is Kevin Crow, and I wish you a great weekend.